We will begin this video by giving a brief overview of our structural health monitoring system. Following this, we will present a demonstration of our system being used. Here we can see the basic system layout of our structural health monitoring and damage mitigation system. Our system functions using the impedance method. The system begins by generating an excitation waveform. This waveform is then amplified and applied to a PZT patch, which is attached to the structure under test. This signal causes the PZT patch to vibrate, which causes oscillations in the structure under test. Once the structure has been excited, the PZT is no longer driven and instead is used to receive the response signal. The vibrations in the structure generate small voltages in the PZT, which are amplified and fed back to the DSP for processing. By establishing a baseline run when the system is healthy, it is possible to compare the received waveform to what is considered to be a healthy waveform. If significant differences exist, then the structure is determined to be damaged. Our test system is designed to detect and correct damages associated with loose bolts. This was chosen because loose bolts are one of the primary modes of failure detected in a structure. If a loose bolt is detected, a shape memory alloy washer can be heated to increase the tension on the bolt. Here we see a cross section of the structure we used. The PZT patch is placed beside the bolt. The shape memory alloy washer is placed in between the bolt head and the material surface. When a loose bolt is detected, this SMA washer is heated. By heating the SMA washer, we cause it to expand. The expanding SMA washer effectively tightens the bolt by increasing the amount of pressure it exerts on the structure. This is the circuit that we use to control the heating of the SMA washer. When the DSP detects damage in the system, it turns on one of the general purpose I.O. pins that are on the chip. This signal is then buffered by an op amp and fed to a relay. When the relay is on, it connects a heating element to a lithium ion battery that is also part of the system. Here we can see an overview of the actual test structure we used in our experiment. You can clearly see the structure under test, the DSP, and the power driving circuit for the heating element. Also note the PZT patch which is attached to this test structure. Now we will present a demonstration showing the system in use. Here you see the demonstration platform for our structural health monitoring system. This board is the power driving circuit for the heater. This is the DSP board which does all of the signal processing. And on the laptop we have a graphical user interface which we use to control the entire system. For this experiment, we set the frequency range from 6 to 8 kilohertz. Now if you look at this graph, it shows the baseline data that was captured from the previous run. Now we are going to loosen the bolt that's on the test structure to simulate damage. Now when we test the structure again, The red LED indicates that damage has been detected in the structure. When you compare the signatures of the last two runs, you can see that there is significant difference between them. Because of the damage detected in the system, the heater has turned on, causing the shape memory alloy to expand. This does not happen immediately, and it takes several minutes for the shape memory alloy washer to expand to the point where it increases the tension on the bolt enough to correct the damage. We will now wait for the system to repair the damage.
The red LED has now turned off, indicating that the damage is no longer detected in the system. The structure has now recovered from the damage. When you compare the most recent run to our initial baseline we calculated, you can see that the differences between the two signatures are relatively minor. As a reference, here we can see the first run we did after loosening the bolt. As you can see, the differences between the baseline in this case are much more pronounced. By heating the SMA washer, we were able to approximate the state the system was in before the bolt was loosened.